Welcome, everyone, to tonight's specialist call. I've got a great specialist uh, in lead generation, Cindy Dumeyer. Cindy, you there? Yes, I'm here, and we've got Tom, too. And just in case somebody has some also real estate questions, we're here. Awesome. We get both of you tonight. Yeah. Pack the steel. Two for one. I love it. <laughs> well, this is your time, everyone, to ask questions. Um, a couple of you I've muted out just because of background noise, but you can unmute using the uh, star seven and uh, ask any questions that you have. Um, but we're here to basically help you and make your life easier and better and get you leads and close on deals. So do we have questions to start with, or I can start with some that were uh, sent over to me? Anybody have any questions to start with? I must be scary. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, Elsa. Let's, let's, let's start with one. Hey, Elsa? Yes. El- Elsa, this is Sherry. I have a quick question. Sure. Go ahead. So is there a certain web hosting um, site that works better than another to create your web page? Well, when I – Sherry, Cindy, Hi. Uh, Tom and I have had, oh, my gosh, I could say 15 websites, and we've paid up $1,200 to $1,500 that promised me that it was going to convert, and it didn't. And finally, we find, found one that we would use. Uh, if you email me, I'll be glad to share it with you. Uh, what you want is a website, like I have 48% conversion rate, and what that means is out of 100 people that come to my website, 48% fill out a form, which is unheard of. Normally, your conversion rate is anywhere from 8 to 12%. Um, most of the time, it's around 8 So a lot of these companies that have all these big bang whistles on the back end that um, – you know, have all these services to handle your leads, usually don't they don't convert. So Tom and I started, well, Tom's created web pages for me, and we found this one company that we use, and I'd be glad to share it with you, and we even tweak it for you. Um, but it has the highest conversion rate, and it is the cheapest. Yeah, if you, if you have any questions, you know, you can just email at success with Cindy and Tom, and I'd be glad to help you. Great, thank you. You're welcome. I think I did. I just get the right one. Her no, I didn't, get the right, well. I didn't get the right email. Hold on. We have. Wait. Let me get it. Success at cindyandtom dot com. Success at cindyandtom dot com. And it's y n d y. Yeah, I think Sherry, that can really help you out. Yeah, it, it's all about yeah, you know you can you can attract a lot of people to your website, and if they just click off, you just want to see how long, and you want them to interact. And if they're just clicking off, you're just wasting money and and time bringing in leads. Okay, what other questions do we have tonight? Yeah, I had a question. Sure. Sure. How do we um, how do we get more people actually going to our open houses? Ah, well, I do things a little different. Um, I I uh, got tired of doing open houses, so I sort of stopped. Except what I do is I promote it like crazy, and I go to an open house for one hour in a weekend. And uh, a lot of times, you won't believe this, but the way we do it, we'll have um, even a mortgage broker there, and I have people there uh, ready to assist you. So I do one hour. It's sort of like um, a little different concept than than normal. There's this company in uh, uh, New York that's called the Filene's Basement, and when they have a sale, it gets bombarded. So I decided to copy that. So I blast everything everywhere on social media and everything, and advertise for one hour, and I have a 
an email list of buyers, and there's 4,000 on there, and we just blast it to everybody. And we usually sell the home, believe it or not, in a weekend, and usually within an hour. You know, we take all the apps and everything. And it's I, if I just sat there and did open houses, to me, you know, it's it's great, but it's a lot of times yeah. I have two couples come through and talk about the pressing. Uh, so I want to be so busy, and I even bring in a team with us to, um, you know, handle all the, the leads and, and the customers and the clients. It's a little different concept, huh? <laughs> No, I know we do an hour and a half only, but I, I again, you know, it is. I'm in um, Brooklyn, and there's just so many houses now on the market that a lot of the buyers. We used to get ten, fifteen buyers to open houses, and now it's the more. I think it became more seller's market. There's more properties on the market, so I'm getting like three to seven buyers. Okay, we I normally get, get about sixty, and what. I do. I mean, I go and I have um, what they call feathers. Um, I put them out there. Now you have to you have to realize, I do not give hardly any information out when I market. Uh, they have to go to my website, which they opt in. They don't know the price. They don't know the address. I do it totally different. I got tired of um, talking to sellers because a lot of sellers don't have money and they waste ninety percent of your time. I mean, buyers. I'm sorry, buyers. buyers yeah. yeah, and they waste your time. And, you know, I'll be honest, I don't talk to anybody, any of the buyers, until I meet them face-to-face. And I already know, um, I've pre-qualified them. I know which ones I want. I know how much they have. I know what their credit score is and everything before they even come. So it, it really works much. It, it works well for us. Tom and I have a number of properties, and we do not have a property management. I do not use realtors. We do it all ourselves, and, you know, we have it sort of automated. Same for rents. You wouldn't believe what we do for that, too. <laughs> but I, I'm just in saving time because the more time I spend at an open house and in doing that, the less I have to make deals and do fun things. Got gotcha. you. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. We have a question that came in here through the chat. Okay. Uh, wanted, let's see, how do I, or what do I do on a shoestring marketing budget? Okay. Well, you can do a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are free. There's a lot of places on the Internet where you can, I mean, one thing I would invest in is a good website, and they're really reasonable. And that is your number one thing. And you can get business cards where we, you know, we'll tell you go to Got Print. Uh, and Tom researches everything. So if he gives you a name or something, it's the cheapest place and the best place in the quality. So you go to Got Print, and I forget how much are they, Tom? Uh, you know, twenty bucks. You know, and for you know five thousand or something. I don't know what it is, but really cheap. And we get a lot of those. You can do Craigslist. There's a lot of places out there that you can list your home. You can search for um, buyers on Zillow. In fact, we have a list. Oh, my gosh, I made up 58 ways to get leads for free, and it's just out-of-the-box creative ways. Um, you know, you can go to here's, – here's one that I do. You go to uh, retirement centers, you know, homes, and you go into the um, finance department, and a lot of people – have you know had to place their parents and the, you know all their money's in the house and that tight in the you know uh, home wants their money so we have brochures that we hand out and they call you if they want to they call you in there so there's a lot of out of the box ways you can do things um, you know post on you know free sites grocery stores and here's Tom and I have shirts that says. Cindy buys houses and insured home buyers. So, you know, to getting the word out is so important. And we have so many people that refer us because they know, you know, know that we do this and we kept putting our name out. So it's very possible to do it on a shoestring budget. You know, just got to get creative. Okay. Hope that answered that question. What other questions do we have? 
Well, one of the ones that was sent in, um, you had mentioned um, last week in the webinar about rounding the price. Correct. When it's like two ninety nine or two forty nine, that sort of thing. Can you explain that a little bit more again? Sure. Okay. A lot of realtors, and you'll see this all the time, they will go and price a home like I'm going to use one hundred ninety nine thousand dollars. Okay. You don't want to do that because even you, as investors, when you search for homes on the on whatever site, you might go from one fifty to two hundred. Right, and if you're going, you'll go from 200 to 250. Now, if your house is, is priced at 199,000, those that are searching for 200 to 225 or 200 to 250, your your property isn't going to come up on the search. So I don't know anybody, that, you know, when they do searches or even in you know, the buyers that they type in 199.9. I don't know why realtors do that. We had a student that could not sell their house, and a friend of mine had him change his price point, and it, it, he did it, I think, on a Wednesday, and he had a contract by Saturday. So it is so important. Makes sense. Yeah, it it, it, it does. I mean, it, it just marketing your house, and it's, it's a little bit of common sense and thinking out of the box, and a lot of times I do the extreme opposite of what everybody else does, and uh, it, you stand out. And that all goes into branding yourself to get you out there. Right. We have a totally different philosophy. I mean, I, I, I should – Tom <laughs> Tom's just looking at it. We um, used to be called insured home buyers, and we switched over to um, – Cindy buys houses. So, you know, we were doing all right with insured home buyers. And he plastered my face everywhere, all over the Internet. I mean, I, mean, I didn't talk to him for three days. I was so mad at him. And he bought the domain, Cindy buys houses. We have a bunch of them. But that, that one, and, oh, I was humiliated. And what happened that our conversion rate skyrocketed, and I became like a little local celebrity. So when I go to someone's house now, it's hysterical they know all about me when I go to put it out under contract. Um, my face is everywhere, and they feel comfortable, and that is because of branding. In order for a seller or a buyer to feel really comfortable with you, you, they have to see your face seven times. That's an old marketing thing, and it's also used in schools. So if, you, if your name comes in front of them seven times, all of a sudden you earn, an, in your mind, uh, a level of credibility. And even in school, if they teach you ones like the solar system, they teach it to you seven times so you retain it. It's the same thing. So I took that, and that's how I started uh, branding myself, and it really worked. And I don't have, uh, I don't want to come across like the typical realtor pose where they're leaning up against the brick wall with their one leg up with their suit and tie and looking perfect. I want to look like the person next door that you feel approachable. And that's how I, you know, how I brand, and I really suggest you to do that also. Uh, Cindy, I have a question. This is Rick. Uh, so uh, you would say uh, use your personal name, like name, because uh, somebody have I don't know, is, I've heard that don't use your name. Like, <laughs> well, in your case, you're buying Cindy buy houses. Well, let me uh, put it. Um, you were the first the one that I know that did it about 15 years ago. I killed Tom. Mm-hmm. And you'll see it everywhere. Uh, we have a have a lot of companies, um, right. and the one that converts the most is the one with me. And if, you know, you you do what you feel is right. Some people, you know, feel a little. I mean, I, I'm an open book. I'm a straight right. shooter. And mm-hmm. you know, when when people call, Google me. I could care less. Google me. And you know, they feel comfortable with that if, if you go and hide behind a big corporation like we were called insured home buyers i mean that sounds pretty good right and uh people were scared of me they thought what is she going to do you know they, were, they wouldn't open up to me as soon as i became the person behind the marketing they felt comfortable and they'll even call and they won't even talk to tom it's it's hysterical you know they say, i need to talk to cindy so it works you know, but you have to do what you feel comfortable doing. Okay. A- any suggestion? Like, m- my name is Rick. Uh, it's Raheem, but everybody calls me Rick. But my last name is Pink. 
and I have tried to go for rig buy houses, but I cannot get it. It's already gone. So should I try for PMG buy houses, or it'll be, should I use the American? Yeah, it's something, something catchy and that's easy to remember. One thing I have going for me, I might spell my name very uniquely, and right. it's really helped me. It's C-Y, N-D-Y, two Ys, and that has, you know, I've just become known as Cindy. So right. if you can, you can even put, you know, um, your last name, and your first name and an initial, like Tom K buys houses or whatever, um, it, just so it's a little bit and. When I asked my Tom, why in the world did you use my name? Well, he says, Tom buys houses, the, the, the website was used. So I had to right. use you. I mean, yeah, right. right. I know. He didn't want his face yeah. up. <laughs> right. But, no, use your name. You want to be um, an everyday type of person because you want these right. buyers and sellers to trust you because they, they should. Sure. You're a good buy. Right, right. Even something like Tennessee Rick buys houses. Yep. Then you have to sort of be careful because of typing it in, you know, like you have to abbreviate somehow so it's short because people okay. cannot read, re- remember, and cannot spell. Right. That's so what I was thinking, like TN Rick yep. buys houses right. or something. Fine. Yep. You know, Great. something quick, simple, easy to remember. Mm hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. We have and, uh, well, one more question. Actually, sure. one more. Have you thought about the program that you are uh, putting it for the coaching and all the stuff, the group coaching? No, but what we're doing, what we're going to be doing is, you know, it's it, we we listen to all these students, and I mean, I I might have talked to you earlier, <laughs> um, and we we're listening to what they want, and we're going to what we're going to do mar- group marketing. And it's never been offered before. I mean, I've been in the business 38 years, and I've been every piece of marketing. I know it. I've created a lot of it that's out there. Mm-hmm. And um, every area is different. And right. what what happens in California doesn't happen in Alabama. And what happens where I am in Bucks County I, doesn't happen in Richmond. We're, we're, we have a, a client that we could not get leads. And finally, we broke the code. Because mm-hmm. every area, you sort of have to tweak what works one place. So what we're doing is is bringing everybody on on a, like a group call, teaching something like this one, but teaching like uh, maybe on pixels, how to put pixels in so everybody, you know how like when you do a search and you're looking for a pair of shoes and everything you go on the Internet, it's there. Um, mm-hmm. We're showing people how to do that. But on weekly calls in order to help you in your market, um, and that's what we're going to be doing, and it's – it, I think everybody's really excited about it. So I am too. It's something totally different. So when is it going to start? We're going to start the, the uh, starting going out in the next week or so, um, an email blast. And we're going to offer, like, there's five steps you need to be a you know, good investor and get you to the next level. And we're going to go through a lot of them. People will have. It doesn't matter if you've been in the business, you know, one hour or 20 years you know, one of the steps, and you can go and, and, and find out where you are. So that's what we're going to be doing. It's going to be very soon, probably in about a week, the emails are going to start going out and launch. Okay, what other questions we got here? Thank you. You're so welcome. Well, one of the ones that was sent in um, is social media really important to build your business and get leads. Okay. That, if you look at the people right now that are buying homes, and if you have any children between the ages of 20 and 40, no longer use the yellow pages. Some of us remember the yellow pages, right? They do not read newspapers. The only place they're looking is on their phone. And we went to Chipotle, oh, gosh, we, I cracked up a couple of weeks ago, and there was 19 people in line and 18 were on the phone, and I was the only one that wasn't because I was counting the people where I would have been on. Everybody looks on social media for everything. Everybody uses their phone. So if you're, if you're just doing one of the, I mean, mailings are fine, but if you're just doing mailings and not doing anything else, you're going to miss 80% of your buyers and sellers. So social media, I mean, I 
I sell a lot of my homes um, through social media, and as I said, I do not use a realtor. I do it all on my own. And, um, you know, it, it's it's imperative that you use social media. If you're not, you, you've got to step up your game. And the thing is with social media, it changes every couple of days. And, you know, you've got to be on top of it. Oh, Tom's talking. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, we found out, like, you can put out even bandit signs or a mailing or whatever, but first thing people do, once they have any interest at all, they go online and check you out, and that's just what they do. So they check your Facebook page, they check your Google account, you know, your Google ratings, you know, do searches for you, and we show up at a house and meet somebody, they say, oh, we know all about you because we checked you out online. So it really is important because it really breaks down the walls and the you know, and they, you know, people are skeptical. And if you don't have much online presence, I said nowadays, like Cindy was saying, the millennials particularly, you know, that's all they do. They they check out all reviews and all about people. And if they don't feel good about it, they just don't call them. They go to somewhere else. So it's critical, actually. And testimonials are are really really big um, for that. I mean, I even had a customer call me and and he said. She said, my son told me I had to call you. I didn't know who her son was, and I've had it the other way around because they've gotten to know me uh, through social media, and they said, you got to call her. You, that's who you have to use, and they will only deal with me. So how's that, you know, for narrowing down your market and, you know, having a, a buyer that wants to work with you? That's the opposite of normally how investors work. Usually they don't want to work with you, and you've got to chase after them. So somebody that chases after you, you know, so much easier to convert. We we turn one out of three into a contract, which is unheard of. And that's because of social media and being out there and being in the front. What would you say the most important social media sites to be active on are? Uh, my favorite is Facebook. My favorite, my daughter's is Twitter. I mean, She's on, and LinkedIn is so important. Sold many homes on that. Uh, so, as I said, I'm partial to Facebook. I'm on there constantly. But you can hit them all. I mean, we use Pinterest, which I like that too. They all sort of. You have to get them. You just don't put it on one. They all have to work together. You've got to have them all tied together into one, or it's just doing nothing. You know, they're they're just out there. So they're all good, and they build upon each other. And also Craigslist. I mean, I I really like Craigslist a lot, too. I mean, you can get some real ding-dongs on there, but you get some really good leads, too. You know, so I've found a number of homes on Craigslist. So, you know, check with them all, and, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but every social media, there's a different purpose behind it. If you're on Facebook, they don't want to be hard pressed, you know, with the big sales pitch, you know, they're on there to have fun. And Pinterest, it's all about pictures. So each one, you have to gear your, your, your branding towards what that social media wants to be a success, if that makes sense. Cindy, this is Sherry. I have a question regarding, sure. um, so real estate investing would be essentially my second career. So I'm trying to – what is your opinion about keeping your prime, your current career separate from your up-and-coming career? All right. I struggled with this, and I am very, very active in church. I am very, very active in the community, and I we had a large contra- electrical contracting business. All right? We struggled with this, and we decided not to cross it all over. Uh, in my bio, it will say that what we owned, where I volunteer, you know, and everything. If you have a job, some jobs, and I have many students that, you know, they can't advertise because, of, you know, they just can't. So you've got to sort of do a different type of name and everything and sort of go incognito, but it really depends on what your occupation is um, or whatever, you know, but we com- we decided to combine them. Was it scary? Oh, my goodness, because I didn't want to be known as one of those sleazy house buyers. You know what I mean? I wanted to be known <laughs> as a nice person. So 
it was tough, but we did it, and we've gotten to be known that. So. Okay. Would you say YouTube is important? Yes, very much so. It used. They've just changed. Oh, it's so frustrating. You you finally figure out YouTube. And then they go and change everything, and they just change something regularly now, and they're wanting more of a story. And, you know, it, it isn't um, like it it was, you know, a month ago. So, yeah, YouTube's great. Um, Google and uh, YouTube, well, they're two, two in one if you didn't know that. They now, instead of just want SEO and words, they want special content. They want They also want the tags and everything in there so you're promoted. But... It's gotta, it's gotta be like almost like a story. It can't just be um, a quick little blurb. They want longer videos now, and how your video performs in the first 48 hours is monumental, because they look and see if you start getting a lot of views within 48 hours, they're going to promote your uh, YouTube. So this whole just YouTube just changed. So you've you've got to have a different mindset now. But YouTube is one of the number one search engines now. And if you ask your kids or grandkids or anybody, or even you, I mean, whenever I don't know how to do anything, what do I do? You YouTube it and figure it out. So they do the same thing. So you've got to, you know, have um, some information for them or answer a question or solve a problem. And that's really important. But YouTube's great. Okay. What other questions we got tonight? Well, we got a quiet group. I know. I can't believe it. This is like the quietest ever. Um, well, what's the best pl- best places to post ads? I mean, would it be Craigslist? Would it be social media, newspaper, what? All of them. Stay at, well, newspapers... I ha- the only exception I have, we have a very local little newspaper that goes to every home. That I'll advertise in. But we used to run ads in the newspaper, uh, Yellow Pages. I know. We even have um, specialty Yellow Pages. We sort of stopped doing all that completely uh, because we found out nobody's reading them. I stopped reading magazines, and I look on my phone. Uh, Tom just mentioned you know, what you said, too, uh, business cards. Really important. We have, I guess what, six business cards at least. Uh, We have all different types, and we have, um, they're with us all the time. And depending who I am with, I give a certain type of business card. Tom has one with just his name on the front, um, and it's on the back of it, it's real smooth, so you can write, well, not smooth, you can write on it. Like a lot of these business cards are glossy and so he's the one meeting with contractors or you know and he can write a note on the back of the card that's when he needs a note that's the one he uses i have a special one that i use just when i'm buying homes um that has my bio on the back and it's you know both sides because i don't want to leave anything empty and then also um i have one when i deal with attorneys so let's say i have a more professional one as the same way so your business cards are very cheap you know where they tom a half a cent a piece or or something like you know how cheap is that to go around you can put them in everywhere and hand them out give them out to everyone you go to um we we use them like crazy i mean i even have gotten uh stickers i think with our business on and and use them where it was appropriate but it you know that's real important but um, oh, my gosh, I'll tell you something, but nobody share this, all right? This is Tom's thing. It's legal. I guess it is legal. Okay, it's legal. So you didn't hear it here, but it's hysterical. Um, we we go out on Friday nights, and so he figured out that your business card fits right into the slot of the credit card, you know, where you slide that baby in there? So after he gets gas, he goes and he puts the business card into the slot where you put your credit card, right? Well, then we'll pull over on the side, and it is hysterical. And people will actually take it out, and they'll read it, and if they don't want it, they'll put their their visa back in, pull it out, and put our card back in. We have sat for rolling on the floor laughing at a gas station 
while people are doing that, it is so much fun. But he does that all the time, and, and people have them. He, he leaves them everywhere. He's real creative. But, yeah, we've, we've been known to do that. I have a lot of creative ways <laughs> that we do. What about car magnets? How do those work for you? Oh, we love car magnets. Um, you know, we have the type. I mean, some people wrap their whole car, which is great. Very costly. But then if I want to go somewhere and, like, you know, I sometimes don't want a wrap car with me. So we have these really awesome um, car magnets that go on that match our business cards. And we use the theme of yellow. And so whenever I go anywhere, and it looks just like our business card. So they slap them right on the car. And you can even, if you really want to, if you have some college kids or whatever, you can pay them 25 bucks a month. And, you know, they'll give them a set to keep on their car. Oh, you're, you, And we have done that, and it's funny. And people will say, I see your cars everywhere. Well, I'm dying laughing, you know. Um, but you you got to get creative. I even, I, I have done this. I um, ran an ad in the newspaper saying I'd like to rent somebody's house for $50 a month on a busy highway uh, for a promotion. My phone rang off the hook. So for $50, I went out in their front yard, got it, and put Cindy Buys Houses sign, not a banded sign, but, you know, a nice sign on there. How cheap is that on a busy highway? And you know, it's, it's we we um, every home that we have listed or before we put it on the market, it has our signs on there, so people know it, it's always put. We always put up Cindy buys houses before we even market it at all, and we get as many of those out as we can. Um, we put on on our larger properties where they're on a main double yellows and a main highway. We have bought banners. Well, how long are they about? Five by four? four by oh, four by six. Banners, and it's it, right across there. And, so you, there's a lot of creative ways. You just take look what everybody else is doing. You want to do the opposite. That's what we do. Uh, Cindy, if you don't mind, where do you get those uh, the car magnets from? Where, where do we get them, Tom? What? Oh, we had a friend that we twisted his arm, and he made oh. him for us. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, you get friends in the business, and they, well, it, you know, you know, you get to know. And he he made them for, for me. Chocolate. What were they? They were really like twenty bucks a pair, but I think he cut us a deal. But okay. but here's the thing: you got to remember. We learned this too. If you put them on your car and you live up north, make sure you take them off periodically because the cold they will stick to your car, and you have to, they come off in chunks and ruin it. So every so often you want to pop them off, probably the same down south, you know. But, um, yeah, we, on and off, they're not that much money. But make your branding the same throughout. So they look like our business cards. And that's how we got out there. Everybody knows. Mm-hmm. And uh, afraid of possibly being a little bold. Um, I also know, you know, like what I've done before, but you do have to check it every now and then, too, is you can get them um, at Staples or Office Max or one of those places. You can get the ones you can print on your printer. Oh, I didn't know that. Cool. And I did that a few years ago for my husband and because uh, this way you can take them off when you don't want them off for whatever reason. And you just have to be careful because you're not – if you don't check it every now and then, wind can get up underneath it and take it away from you. Start eating better. So that's um, but Vistaprint, I think, also it does it really cheap. Right. My friend used Vistaprint, and he got – I cracked up. He put, actually, um, a card dispenser on the back of his card and and magnets, and and the people would take them. And it was hysterical, he, 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 you know, and that was his way of doing it, and that worked, too. I worked with a investor that was also a chiropractor, and he parked his Humvee with, um, or his Hummer rather, with a magnet for the investing business on the side of his Hummer and parked it in front of the chiropractic office. Perfect. And I've been known to go to busy shopping centers and put it there too. Oh, come into the study. Oh. Or 
like John Iannotti's done and have his truck lettered up and him sit in front of Home Depot on a Saturday morning. No, I haven't done that one yet. That's a fun one. I know John's a good guy. That's a good one. Perfect. Home Depot on a Saturday morning and people are calling him while he's sitting in the truck. Perfect. That's awesome. That's a great idea. That one I didn't try. One up for John. (laughs) Anyone else have any questions? Got quite a few on tonight. Nobody's got questions. I can't believe this. Any of my students on? Anybody got any questions? Fields that they're working on. This is here. I think somebody, there we go. Yes, good. Okay, yes, Sherry. Can you hear me? So I can hear you. You had set up your website and connected them with the social media. Um, mm-hmm. Repeat that, it cut right. out, Sherry. Say, say, oh, say sorry. It That's okay. After you had set up your website, so think way back. Yeah. So after you had set up your website and then you connected them with each of the social media uh environment yes how how long did it take you before leads started to trickle in the way i've done it i've been on the first page of google google in three hours well i've made it actually one time in an hour um you can get uh, you can get leads immediately uh when we do it there's two ways of doing it you want to go two ways you want to get deals that are coming in immediately because you want to get leads and you want to get going and you want to make money, but then also you want to build up the back end. So you, the same time you're you're promoting the the quick leads, you're also working on the back end. And what what I mean by that is by getting your Google set up and get all the citations. There's a whole um, list to do because it's just like the back end is like building a house. And you've you've got to build your foundation first, and then you put your you know cement down, and then you put the studs up and build the walls and the roof. When you get your back end going and and the front end going, the back end builds upon itself, and it the Google shares and shares, and it like multiplies. Um, I've been in 880 news stations, been on CBS, NBC, them all. Uh, and it, through all this, and they create links. I basically pro, I so little now on marketing because it's coming from when I did it before, and it keeps building like a snowball going down a hill. So when you first start, you want two types. You want your fast ones to come in, which is you know Craigslist and and all this. But then again, you got to take those to build on your back end. So it keeps repeating and repeating and repeating and growing. And that's when you end up starting to you, – what you want to do is dominate your market. And if I put um, Buy Your House Pennsylvania out there, it would take me a hard time to get to the top on Google on the first page. You've got to do – it's geo-targeting. You, it's sort of like a battle – and you go in and you conquer a small town, then you conquer a city, and you keep spreading out and conquering. And when you conquer those, it builds and builds and builds and pushes you up. So eventually, when you search sell your house, yay, I come up. It sounds crazy. But that's how it works. But you can get leads. I've gotten them 10 minutes after starting. Um don't guarantee that, but very, very easily. If you have the right ad up there and the right thing going, yep, they start coming right in. Now, here's what I want to tell you. And I, as I mentioned, thousands of leads. And the number one problem that I see with investors is they get a lead, they get all excited, and then they don't call. Or they put it off. I'll call tomorrow because they're nervous. They don't know what to say. Or they put it off longer. When you have a seller contacting you, the most important thing I can ever tell you, or if a VA sends you a lead or whatever, the first thing you want to do is call that person because if you don't, your competition will. And if they have to keep, 
you know, chasing after you, they're going to get tired. And they'll start getting other people involved. But as soon as you get that ad or that lead, immediately you need to call them. That's so important. And I could say 90% of students don't do that. Does that answer your question, Sherry? It does. It does. Yeah. I had one that I, I had another one to piggyback off of that, but I need a minute to uh, circle it back around. Ah, no problem. So, Cindy, do you rec uh, you don't recommend pay per click and stuff like that because they get expensive. Well, you can use pay per click. You can use all that. And it can end up costing you a lot of money. And I am right. very thrifty, and right. I don't want to spend some five, six, ten thousand dollars a month. Uh, right. When we generate leads, it, I usually my my normal ten cent a lead is what I pay, and so that's you know ridiculously low. But I've been in it a little longer, so you know you might be twenty, fifteen cents, twenty cents. So when you go pay-per-click, I mean, there's right. even ways to do ads on Facebook or whatever that you will get right. a, um, a higher conversion. With impre it's, it's a whole big thing, but uh, impressions versus views. And my daughter came up with a method, you know, that she knocked the cost way down because she was doing this. She found this little tweak to do, and it's constantly changing. But you can, if you want, is to hire a company and, and do, you know, Click ads. Problem is, they got to be on top of it, right. and you have to constantly check. I did it. I mean, I'll tell you, I, I did it. Um, you have to constantly be checking what the keywords are, where the ranking is, and then what ranks in my area won't rank in yours. And you know, it's 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 intense and it's expensive. You know, but you can get leads that way. But okay. your cost so the training you you will offer will have everything in there. What you are telling us right now? In what? What you tra The training that you're going to offer? Yeah, that it's is coming next yeah. week. You will have a step-by-step -step process, and yep. then where we get stuck, you will help us on the phone. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And we even, when we do that, um, give sample leads and okay. tweak them. There's different type of people that like different type of ads. And, like, I want it quick, fast, give me the facts, that's it, I'm in and out. Tom wants to read about it, research it, and right. do a, a timeline, a chart, you know. <laughs> right. So you have to write an ad that appeals to everybody. You know, just, you, you just don't do one ad. You have to do variety. Okay. And then the, would you have some kind of, uh, like, a... Uh, the ad and stuff like that, because you have to be creative with the ads also. So yeah, we have them all. Yeah, we have them all. We, we've we gone and split test ads, which ones convert better, which one's better. Um, okay. You know, I use certain type of homes in my ads. Uh, you know, we what you, what we do is we, we've we done a lot of – we do all the work. We, we find out, hey, this ad really converts well. So then that's what we use. And then Bobby might tweak it. And change it, or have the team change it, and it converts a little higher. So you can, you know, completely changing. If you're not getting um, a response in your area, you want to try something a little different, and you know, to find your niche because every area is different. And, right. You know, and I can't get over it saying that enough. You know, so you you got to tweak it a little bit to find out what works and converts for you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Hey, Cindy, this is Sherry. Sure. Yeah, sure. Do you, do you have um, resources that you use to um, that you could share that would develop, like, ideas on how to develop your web page or kind of yeah. those things that are going to attract? Well, let me uh, tell you this way. Are, are, Sherry, are you a web designer? No. <laughs> Okay, let me put it to you this way. We, Tom has designed them for me. When you do a website, it has to be so tight that that's where your keywords are. And, you know, so we'll, you know, I'll give you info on it if you want. It's really, really cheap, these websites, and they're the best. And there's a way to put them up and to put them together. 
I'm telling you, uh, you know, you can do it if you want. Don't waste your time because it. You can. We're really big at do what you're good at and write checks for the other. And I know, you know, it's tight in the beginning, but there's one thing you want is a good website or you're throwing everything out. So I would not create my own. I would not. I, I do what works, and then it converts for you. So that. In a nice way, I'm saying you can do it if you really want to, but it's probably a waste of your time because there's so much to it. And, I mean, WordPress isn't that hard to do, I understand, but it's the the content that's so important. And, you know, it's, it's a, there's the key, one of the keys right there. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's cheaper, too. <laughs> Doing it that way, you know, if you even hire somebody, it's much cheaper to just get the websites than to hire somebody. Okay. Anyone else? No other questions? No other questions? Like somebody's listening to the game. I know, and that's it's funny. No, so I guess you know if everything's good. Everybody, you know, has no questions. I guess not. Okay. Uh, well, we appreciate everybody being on here tonight, and I thank you, Cindy, for your time tonight with everyone. Sounds good. It was great seeing you again and talking to you again today. Yeah. So, you know, everybody give your word of advice. You know, keep out there. Don't stop. Keep going. Press in. And, you know, right when you feel like you're quitting, that's usually when everything falls together. So don't stop. And I and I tell everybody, you got this because you do. And you call your call your leads. Keep going. Don't stop. Push in. Go after. Keep a lot of fires in the iron, and I guarantee you, you'll be successful. Okay? Well, Elsa, thank you so much for hosting this. I appreciate you, and I appreciate your friendship. And, you know, probably be talking to you soon. Sounds great. I appreciate you doing this uh, for this month. And... If anybody has any follow up, just um email and let me know and I can get the get the message over to Cindy. Sounds great. And I'll be sending out a replay to everybody. All right. Talk to you later. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Uh bye bye. Bye bye.